Good night to you. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I know you're watching this um, in uh, replay or ah yes after we've recorded. So I just want you to type in the number one if you're watching the replay of this um, while we're waiting for everybody else to log in. Today our topic is going to be the seven key lessons that um, you know you you should learn in order not to fail in either your first year in business or you know as a startup but now we now have um the live people coming in so let me just introduce them to the show shu vang how are you and michelle ricketts thank you so much for tuning in hope you're having a fantastic week allison brother how are you doing everybody else is coming in slowly thank you thank you thank you for tuning in and obviously um for those that are watching for the first time, my name is Prosper Taruvinga, and I would like to welcome you to this show where we will be talking about the seven key lessons that you can learn uh, from failed startups, all right? And um, obviously, as one of those um, things that I have to do be before the beginning of the show, I really want you to know that I believe in you, and I believe in your business, I believe in your success, and I believe that if you're running a business, it has to be profitable and enjoyable. I see Nicole Gallo has just tuned in. Sandy Walker, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, it was really nice talking to you earlier, Sandy. Thank you so much. Right, and I also believe that if you're running an online business, um, you should be able to create for and relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. And every single day, we sit around here for 30 minutes so that we can talk about how you too can have a business that um, you know will inspire you to do things that actually inspire you. All right, I see David Kalp has just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. All right, so you might be wondering why I do this. Um, for me, this is just to help you generate leads and revenue and basically for you to actually um, be in front of your audience. And also, I want you to build systems within your business so that it actually operates on autopilot and also you can then, um, you know, after watching these videos, be in a position to curate and create an online footprint that you can optimize your business for growth and for a lot of profit. All right. So like I always say, I really, really believe that if you're running a business, it has to be profitable and it has to be enjoyable. And I also want to help you build sales overnight and then you can build your brand over time all right so i can see some people are just trickling in which is fine uh those that really care about the content will stick around those that don't will just dabble like they're doing with their businesses and their lives um right so today we're talking about you know i think six or seven things that i came up with one two three four Five. I think I'll be adding some more things um, as we go. Lessons that you should actually learn from failed startups um, or businesses that are um, have failed, um, you know, because it's now the end of the year. Some people might have tried to start a business, but now they've just realized they they haven't got it in. They can't manage a business, etc., etc. So I see Justin McLaren just tuned in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Aaron Egan, my man, how are you doing? Today we're talking about the seven lessons that you can learn from failed startups. And finally, you made it to another one. It's a good thing, man. Today we're actually talking about... You know, why other businesses become a statistic? We're talking about why businesses don't follow through. We're talking about why other businesses actually, um, you know, fail and become, um, you know, one of those uh, uh, statistics that we read about. Because as, as far as I'm concerned, apparently 95% of businesses don't make it, um, you know, past the first year. The reason is... When January comes in, everybody is so excited or oh, they're drunk and they're too hangover and they start putting out their resolutions to say, oh my God, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to start my own business. And then by the time it hits June, July, August, they start, you know, feeling the punch and they start realizing that, you know, they're biting a little bit more than they should. And, and then when they come to this time of the year, which is usually Christmas and New Year's, Either they're going into second year or they're going back to look for a job or in the unemployment line. All right. So 
Do you know what I mean? Um, you know, a lot of startups are not going to be on the starting line for 2018. Um, it's going to be a few people that I actually know personally that are not going to cross the chest um, and go into 2018. I'm not trying to be the devil's advocate, but I'm actually going to be telling you the lessons that I have learned in the way. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the lessons that I have also seen other people going through, um, you know, um, that have resulted in them failing. Because in life, we're here to live, we're here to learn, we're here to contribute, right? And then living, I will leave that for you to decide. Learning, we all learn from experiences, we all learn from failures, we all learn from mistakes. But the thing is, we can't go through all the experiences we can't go through all the failures so what then happens is you learn from other people that have failed or you learn from other people's experiences in the process i see um megan hill has just tuned in congratulations on being a published author what a way to end the year and congratulations on all the success that you've been um you know dishing out throughout the whole year what you've done my love um, a lot of people take a whole lifetime, but you've managed to do that in a year. Now, let's see what 2018 has in store for you. All right. So like I was saying earlier on, you know, a lot of startups for for various reasons or reasons will be known to them. Um, you know, most of them fail. All right. After all, um, starting a new business requires you to really be strong. First of all, you need to be strong in your own hypothesis of who you are as a person second who you're going to be selling whatever you're going to be selling to which is your target audience and third of all about your products and your services all right if any of those are not gelling together no way are you going to get any attention from anyone not even yourself because if you're not happy about the work you're putting out there, if you're not happy about the products you're putting out there, if you're not happy about you yourself, you're not going to continuously work in the way that you're going to be working in order to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And more than that, you know, a lot of people typically just start a business just out of spite, you know, just so that, you know, they have something to do on the side. But little do they know that, you cannot go half gangster in these things. Yes, you can, you know, do it as a side job, but it's going to involve you to be, you know, be there for the clients. You're going to be demanding money off of create content for them, etc., etc. Back in the times, you could just set up a website, you build it, and then they will come. But then these days, people need to see, people need to give you attention in order for them to even start looking at your stuff. You could pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to Facebook ads, um, and, and, but if you don't have attention, you've got nothing, all right? So more often than not, a lot of people are failing because they're failing to adopt new ways of marketing because the marketing landscape, anyone with a phone right now, anyone with a laptop, anyone with a couple of books that they've read, a pair of track pants and a t-shirt can start a business. So if you're not louder than the person who's below you in the newsfeed, then you are, you are forgotten and you become a one-click wonder. And a lot of people are not adjusting to that aspect of business. More than that, you know, you, you, you must typically adjust your approach over time so that it helps your business to succeed. Right now, I've been doing the same way of business for the last three years. And guess what? In 2018, I'm totally flipping the script. I'm totally changing the way I'm doing business. I'm totally changing the, the price points. I'm still doing the same thing, but I'm now going where the attention is. All right. Now, if I can manage to do that, if I, you know, can manage to, um, you know, flip and, and, and change like that, then if you're smaller than what I'm putting out there, you must also be looking at your strategies. Do you know what I mean? Because if you don't adjust your approach over time to help your business succeed, you will see firsthand why it's not working and what, what is actually not working in your venture. You will see the instant feedback. No one will purchase from you. No one will be buying whatever it is that you're selling. But as an entrepreneur, there's one thing that you should look at. You don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. Look at what's working. Look at who needs what you're selling and go after that person like your life depends on it. Because it does. Trevor Mayame, Zrufambe. Kondanzo, Tiku Zambia, Waku, Wanuma Purisa, my Chinese. 
Moto ita ma entrepreneur wako no because za presa ku musho. You know? Stephen Kelly, my man, how are you doing? Hope you're having a fantastic uh what day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday. You know? But as an entrepreneur, what I'm talking about today is the seven reasons why other people fail and why other people um you know um you know uh, p- uh, pursue the entrepreneurial goals. You know, you don't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. You don't necessarily have to come up with a totally different product. Look at Uber. Look at Airbnb. All they did was looked at what people were paying attention to. Airbnb looked at, you know, people really wanted time in, in, in booking their hotels. And then they offered the platform. Uber offered the platform for people to book a taxi. Do you know what I mean? They just looked at what the audience, what the market was longing for, and they delivered that. So you don't have to necessarily reinvent the wheel. But a lot of failed businesses is because they're following what has been called their passion, and then the niche is only their grandmother, their grandfather, and three other friends that are just trying not to hurt their feelings. All right? So many other businesses that have failed, you know, they can be studied. And some of them are close to us. Some of them are our friends. You know, some of them are people we actually know, you know, and you can use those lessons that you've learned from them in their failed attempts to actually improve on your chances to succeed. Because like I said, you're here to live, you're here to learn, you're here to contribute, all right? The learning you only learn from other people's mistakes and failures, all right? And we can't commit all those mistakes. That's why we need to learn from other people that are failing already, you know? And then the biggest problem of entrepreneurs these days is because they think that they know it all. After all, you, you know, you're already successful in your mind. You already have the motivation. You already have the Tony Robbins tab playing 24-7. Who cares what other people have to say? Who cares what I have to say? But guess what? Fight the edge. Fight the edge of thinking that you know it all. Because you know nothing. A lot of people have startups that have failed. Because, first of all, they did not listen to the customer who, of which they were selling the product to. Validate your product with your customers. All right? As a small entrepreneur, you've got so much leverage. You are really, really close to the people you're going to be selling to. Because you actually communicate with them on Facebook. Stop treating yourself as if you, you're an A-list celebrity and not respond to people that are asking questions about your product. How are you going to know what your customers um, are going through? How are you going to know what product they need next after they finish purchasing the product that you've got out there on the market? The one reason why a lot of startups fail is because they fail to create for and relate to the audience they're going to be demanding money off of. I continuously say this statement that you have to be able to create for and relate to the audience you're going to be demanding money off of. All of those, you know... Dream lifestyles, all of those Lamborghinis that you're looking for, that is other people's money that you're going to need. But if you're going to ignore them right from the get-go, how do you expect somebody to offer you their credit card if you're not talking to them, if you're not understanding what their pain point is, and if you're not actually solving their problems? You know? So at the end of the day, like I'm saying, one of the reasons why you know a lot of people fail is because they la- they, they fail to relate to the lack of demand in the marketplace of their commodity. You know, they're not getting outside of the, 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 the frame to see the bigger picture. They're just caught up in their head thinking that people dig their stuff, pe- thinking that people like their videos, thinking that people like their products when nobody likes them. If you look at the sales that you've been having, are these people, you know, are you re- retaining them? Are you getting their attention for next products? Or do you have a value ladder that when they've purchased something, they can pick on something from you? Because if they just pick up something and they don't come back, they don't leave a review, you've lost that client. The money that you've spent to bring that customer in is all lost and forgotten. You know? So because you may think that, you know, you know what your, what your customers want and need. Did you do any research? You know? But you must validate your beliefs, your assumptions directly. You need constant feedback from your audience to see whether they will continue buying from you or not. Because after all, the last thing you want is to make something that nobody wants to buy. And I know of friends that have garages full of stock that people are not going to purchase. You know? 
These days, people, people are so diverse in the way they do business. You need to be aligned with their worldview. You need to be aligned with their way of thinking. You need to be aligned with their political views. You need to be aligned with their values or whatever they put, um, you know, first president. Because if you focus on a niche, it's a good idea. But you, you, you're confining your target to a very narrow segment and it may backfire. You know? Because these days, what is a niche? 25 to 35 year old male who is a busy person. But guess what? There's a 25 year old who is still in university and there's also a 25 year old who is a father of six. How are you distinguishing that person? They're still the same target that you're targeting on Facebook. A 26 year old female can be a university student or she could be a mother of nine. You know? So you really need to figure out, are these people valuing what I'm putting out there? Do they value my values? Do they know my value proposition? Or do they actually like the things that I'm putting out there? A niche is a smart idea, but you're just confining your audience to a narrow segment and it, and it can backfire. You know, you need to understand your customers needs, wants, and what it is that actually makes them tick. You know, but you know what? You don't want to copy any other company that has already attempted, um, you know, to offer those things to the same, um, you know, people. Because what we are doing is just narrowing who we can reach out to because it's easy and everybody else is doing it. But guess what? If you really want to stand out, if you really want to get attention, you don't have to mimic other people. I mean, yes, you can copy. Why invent mediocrity when you can copy genius? But make sure you are showing your own value proposition out there. You know? Good day, tough. How's it going, my man? All right? So you need to build something that is unique to you. A unique product. A unique service that is unique and is easy to understand. You know? So when you can personally understand it and you can embrace the values that are wrapped around that service, it's easy for you then to go and test that product to an audience that is willing and able to make a purchase. You know, you can start a business of people that like, you know, uh, um, you know, egg whites. But how often are they using the egg whites and how often do they need to be eating something that is made of egg whites? It is a good and viable niche, but how often do people need to consume your product? So what you need to use is, 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 is the Colgate or the toothbrush um, you know, um, measurement theory. If people do not need to use your product as frequent as possible, try another product. Because out of sight, out of mind. All right. And always test your products and services on a small scale before you expend money um, trying to reach a market that doesn't care about what you're pro uh, offering out there. And that's the reason why a lot of people fail. Mike James, how's it going, my man? Thank you so much for tuning in. All right. You always want to make sure that the market you're, you're reaching out to is big enough. You know? Because the, the, the biggest common reason why small businesses fail is because the target audience is simply small. You know, how many people have dreadlocks, um, you know, that you can actually uh, say, I've got a, a, a targeted audience. I'm going to start something that would make a difference in people's lives. Not a lot of people, right? So look at how big the audience is, how often they're going to want to use that commodity and then go to town with it. The market should be drawn down by, you know, you know, um, to use the product as often and as frequent as possible, you know, because if they don't use it every single day, like toothpaste or very so often, then out of sight, out of mind, you know, that's why many companies employ what is called controlled obsolescence. That's why your phone only lasts two years. Because had could you, if your phone could last five years, do you think Apple and Samsung will still be in business? So you need to make sure that your audience, your, your products are all being utilized regularly so that you are not going to be, um, you know, forgotten when people go out or when they want to use, um, you know, your, 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 your commodities or whatever service you're putting out there. This then supports your profitability, your cash flow, and growth of your efforts. You know? 
Remember, you can never do too much market research in, ca in, in case we're not doing enough. When you're launching a new business, you have to test those ideas against proven people that are willing and able to pay for those ideas. Understand that, you know, when you're doing your initial launch, you might be well received because the people that are, um, um, you know, are, are, are receiving the products are people that probably know you. But by the time you want to go to this segment of the market, which is the mass market, you need to have had ambassadors that are already w uh, believing your story over here. All right. Study the market. Find out what people actually want and deliver it to them. You know, in addition, focus. Don't be the person that's just going to start that, start that, start that. People are tired of one-click wonders. For you to have sustainable growth, you have to show people you're in it for the long haul. Charlie O'Shea, how you going, my brother? You know? Because if you're not grounded in your own, um, you know, your own focus, in your own heart and soul, in wanting the business to, to, to succeed, you know, the efforts of your competitors will thwart you. You know? And you start react, reacting to the market instead of, you know, you being the person that's actually being a thought leader. And these days, if you're just a me too or a has been, people don't have time for that. People don't have time for that. And also one thing that I got reminded of today by Taf, thank you so much. Um, about that if you really want a business that is profitable and enjoyable you need to understand the importance of the right partners and the right team you know in as much as find out what your strengths are find out who you are as a person and what you're capable of and what you bring to the table and then get other people to fill out for all those um, you know inconsistencies that you might have because not all, not all of us are good on video not all of us are good at talking. Not all of us are good at writing. Not all of us are good at putting content out there. So if you know what your strengths are, do more of that and make sure you find people to fill in the gaps either by outsourcing or actually hiring people that you trust. You know? Because you may be starting your own business maybe in the next year or you've been doing it alone in 2017 but now you want to cross over to 2018 as a one-man operation, which is fine. But it's not advisable in many situations because you do not see many of the blind spots. And a lot of startups that we all know, they use a team approach or they have some person that is working with them. You know? So at the end of the day, different people bring in unique strengths and, you know, with your ability all put together. That's great teamwork. And when you harness all those combined strengths, you become unstoppable. But guess what happens? You have to be willing to release power and authority within your business because maybe you don't have the technical skills, the creativity. You need to give those people room to wiggle and think so that they put out high valued and sought after work. You know? And you should be able to allocate the tasks, all the projects, everything else that you need to put out there in order for you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. I don't think you're building this business so that you become a statistic that's not going to make it past the five-year mark. All right? I, I, I believe that you're building this business so that you can become profitable and enjoyable. I believe that you're doing this so that you can leave your legacy. I believe that you're doing this so that you can will it to your future generations. So how do you do that? You really need to stay focused. Pick up a good team. All right? And then at the end of the day, once you've got that, really stay focused. If you look at how many things you are dabbling on right now, try and figure out what is it that you're really, 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 really good at, that you're passionate about, that is useful, and that you think can be a success and is needed on the market. Everything else, cut it off and focus on the one thing. Because many, many entrepreneurs, you know what, they're highly creative and adventurous. If something comes in, they're already jumping onto it. If something comes up, they jump onto it. You may have a dozen money-making ideas and side ventures in mind, but you need to focus. Follow one course until successful. All right? And you need to focus on your primary goal because you can't hit a target that you cannot see. So right now, if you've got more than three things that are going at the same time, you're going to fail. 
That's a fact. Cause you can't chase two heads. You can't chase, um, you know, two rabbits. Uh, or you, you know, you can't chase two rabbits at the same time. Find that one thing that you're really good at, that you're passionate about, that people actually need and are willing and able to pay for. And once you've got that, go after it as if your life depends on it. Because it does. You really need to focus on your primary goal. And then target whatever you're going to be doing. Even if it doesn't work today, all you got to work towards is building sales overnight and building a brand over time. I'm going to repeat that. It's only sales that you can build overnight, but you build a brand over time. All right? So turn your attention into essential elements because your failures can become content and stories that you continuously hook the audience until you're ready. So don't ever, you know, um, you know, underrate or underestimate your failures because from then, that's where you actually get the momentum to grow. And you continuously deliver your products because if you really want your business to exist in the world, you've got to fail for you to get there. That's, that's a given. Even, uh, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, Steve Jobs had to be fired from a company that he created and he still came back again. How embarrassing is it to be fired from a company that you, you, you created? So never, never underestimate the lessons that you get from failing and never lose focus because you may lose focus. It's going to happen. You're going to be trapped by, you know, whatever shiny object that comes in every Friday and your startup may flounder and you won't be on the starting line of 2018. And that's a given. And one of the things that a lot of people are doing is, yes, I know you know how to do your job, but never neglect marketing. All right. Another common reason why startups fails is because they have ineffective marketing. You know? You might have the best product in the world. You might have the best service in the world. But if people are not paying attention to it, grand opening, grand closing. So you need to figure out, are you actually appealing to your target market? Because they cannot make a decision to buy if they don't know of its existence. Even word of mouth can be very effective, you know? Most entrepreneurs, you know, they, 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 they fail to plan. And you know what happens if you, if, you plan, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So determine what effective methods would actually, you know, work well with your worldview, the people that you want to attract, and create effective marketing strategies from day one. Get people to know what you're selling. Make it important. Because out of sight, out of mind. And you have to be focused. Because people are watching. Remember, they need to see your stuff eight to ten, I mean six to eight times. But because there's so much noise in the in the in the world right now, you just gotta continuously cheap at that. Um, you know, you gotta continuously cheap at that uh, oak tree. Because if you hit an oak tree, a thousand sports, different, you know, different sports, um, you know, um, you know, if you hit an oak tree in a thousand different sports, a thousand times, you will never put it down. But if you hit it in the same sport a thousand times, you have 99.9% .9 chance of putting that thing down. All right. Because the more you market yourself, the more value you're going to be putting out there and you're paid in direct proportion to the value you put on the marketplace. You know, the internet is great for marketing, but people have to know you. They have to trust you and they have to like you. How do you do that if you're not showing face? So you want to maximize your benefits so that you provide your startup, you know, with, with, with the most exposure there is possible. If you failed in 2017, regroup, sit down, and use those failures as a resource to learn from. Because many startups are becoming a statistic in the next two weeks. They're not going to be on the startup of, I mean, on the startup lane of 2018. Good on you. It's been a good run.
those that are going forward, if you've watched, um, you know, a startup fail or if you've watched your startup grow, and but guess what? Failure happens overnight. That's one thing that happens overnight in business. Figure out what you really, really want, what you really want to exist in this world. You know? And most of the things that I just mentioned above are what are bringing people down. So now that you know what to avoid, go in and focus. Go in and make sure you've got your target audience that has the same worldview as you. Make sure you're working like hell. Because the people that are competing against you, they're not taking a day off. And why should you? You know? And when you start noticing problems, find out people that can help you. And don't leave it until it's too late to address the situation. Because then it will probably be too late. So if you're preparing to launch a startup, or if you're already taking in the plunge, and this is maybe year one, or you're going into year two, analyze your situation perfectly, carefully, figure out if you got enough cash flow or, or activities around you that you know would, would give you cash flow so that your mind is not taken in by all those other shiny objects. Do stuff that matters. All right? Because if you're waking up and doing things that don't matter, you're not going to stick around with it. I really believe that if you're going to be running an online business, it has to be profitable and you have to enjoy working in it. You know, and I really, really believe that if you're a business owner, you should be able to create for and relate to those you're going to be demanding money off of. All right. Like I said earlier on, build on sales overnight and build a brand over time. I really want to inspire you to do things that inspire you. So in the next com coming days, I'll just be talking about how to leverage what you've learned in 2017 so that you've got a really mighty start ahead of everybody else in 2018. And if you found this video valuable or if you think somebody really would um, utilize this information, please share it. For me, it's no longer, um, you know, a, 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 um, what do you call it? A popularity contest. I'm good. All right. I really want you to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And if you've made it up until now, just share this video, you know, because all you can do is all you can do, really. Right. Trevor Miami, 2018 Christmas box. <laughs> all right. I want you to go out there and earn more money with less struggle. This whole thing is easy, but if you make it hard, it will be hard. All right. Just figure out what you want, who needs it. Just put it out there. And never let your foot off the gas. Alright? In the meantime, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll catch you guys again tomorrow.